cute. I had a seizure one night when I was a teenager on the front step of 424 on Thayer Street in Providence, Rhode Island. I'd been drinking a Coke, watching cars drive by, and talking to a friend about seagulls. We were thinking the ones we'd seen behind the store flying around garbage should probably change their name to garbage gulls because they seem to prefer dumpsters to the ocean now, which we admired. Impressively adaptive, my friend noted. He felt that garbage gulls smacked of speciesism, though, and suggested the more politically correct refuse gulls, <laughs> which has no alliterative appeal. I was about to argue this point when I noticed that my head hurt and I was flat on my back looking up at his face in the glaring fluorescent light. What happened, he asked me, like I knew. <laughs> Reaching up, I felt sticky fluid on my face and in my hair, hoped that I had cracked my skull on the cement step and that the sticky fluid was nice dramatic blood. That'd be better than suddenly keeling over and pouring a can of soda on my own face. <laughs> But my Coke can was empty, and he wasn't looking at me as if I was covered in blood. He just looked sort of surprised. That's got no alliterative appeal, I told him. It's embarrassing when our brains spend time in other places. It can seem broken or odd, and that hurts our feelings. One eye here and another out of this world will set off your balance, too, poking little holes in the beautiful mask you wear in public. Your weirdness is shining through the eye holes like so much bright light. Friends, lovers, and well-wishers whose hearts are not made of stone are never fooled by a mask anyway, though. Which is good, because then you don't mind so much when your tears soften the paper mache, when sequins flutter to the ground, and the eye holes split, exposing your fears, and the glitter all stuck to your fingertips when you finally pull the mask away. this song. I like God too. He invented a lot of stuff. <laughs> I'm just a poor with